What up, what up, Wholesale to Million family? I'm bringing you guys back with another subscriber first wholesale deal interview. Before I bring him on, I'm, um, he just closed his first, uh, first wholesale deal recently, um, made $14,500 from Houston, Texas, and he did it by driving for dollar using an app, and I'm gonna have him share with you what that app is. But before I bring him on, I want to, um, let you guys know, those of you who are new to the channel, if you haven't subscribed, boom, smash the subscribe button, turn on your bell notification, man, so when I go live or upload a new video, you will get notified. And also, too, for those of you who recently closed your first wholesale deal, man, I love to bring you onto the channel. So email me or comment below or follow me on Instagram. Go to Kong. K-H-A-N-G dot, like a period, W-T-M. Shoot me a DM. Show me the money. Show me the picture of the checks. <laughs> I would love to have you on, man, so you can share with everybody your stories. Um, you know, the reason why we do this is for inspiration, motivation, for those that are, you know, struggling, trying to get that first wholesale deal done, because I know how tough it is, right, to get your first one. And, it's to give, and, 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 and just to give you that little juice and let, that little belief that anybody can do it, but it's going to take an amount of work and uh, commitment and dedication. So um, right. put your hand together, put your thumb together, and help me welcome Loopy G from Houston, Texas. What up, bro? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening, Kong? <laughs> hey, dude, thank you so much, man. And, and thank you so much for taking your time to jump on. And to do this with me again, dude, because I know we did an Instagram live and it didn't go so well because of, uh, because of my internet connection, bro. So I apologize for that. No problem. No problem. So, uh, Lupe, I'm, dude, I'm going to let I'm going to let you take over the show, man. And I, sh I want what, what, what I want to know is the dirt. I want to know your stories, your background, your stories, how you got into wholesaling and then leading into your first wholesale deal, bro. Take it over. Uh, so, so basically, I've I basically been an entrepreneur my whole life. Uh, my dad actually is an entrepreneur also. He has a limousine company. And uh, so I've been an entrepreneur my, my whole life. And uh, I just saw myself needing to, needing to take a, a, a better route and a better change. And one, one late night, I was, um, actually, I was actually up one late night and the, and the infomercial came on for, for uh, a seminar. So it was a, like a two hour seminar for, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but uh, man, I forgot the name. But Hopefully anyway, it's not me, dude. yeah, Thad Merrill, Thad Merrill. Yeah, it was a Thad Merrill <laughs> event. So yeah, it was a seminar for that. So uh, I signed up to go to the, to the event. Uh, went to the event and then I was like, okay, this is what I thought about doing a while back. So uh, I actually signed up for the, the, uh, the three day the three-day workshop, you know. Uh, well, at first they call it a class, so I thought it was a class. But you know, I did went to the three-day uh, workshop, and on the second day, uh, uh, second day, I figured out that the name changed from class to workshop. And uh, that whole time, I was waiting on the on the workshop. I was on YouTube and stuff, you know, you know, trying to learn a little bit, so I wouldn't just be completely, you know, just dry on the whole topic once I got to the workshop. So I. I had knew a lot of stuff by then, you know, watching your channel, Max Maxwell and stuff like that, Flip Man and stuff, man. I, I was I was on it. So when I got to the workshop, I was like, damn, I ain't, they ain't teach me, they ain't teach me half of what I learned on YouTube. <laughs> so man, man, I hey man, I was up in there. Look, I was in there. Come, they they told me to come on. They told me to come on to the back. Uh, to the back to, to see about the master program and ask me about giving them $30,000. I say, shit, I, I say, shit, I got, I got, I got like 15,000 on me right now, but what y'all gonna give me? Y'all gonna give me a house? I literally had like 15,000 on me. So he was like, uh, now nah, we're gonna give you a mentor and blah, blah, blah. I say, oh, nah, cause I got cash money. I say, he gonna tell me where I'm, I ain't gonna never meet him. He was like, nah, I say, oh, nah, I ain't gonna be able to do that. <laughs> I say, man, nah. So he was like, man, I got some books for you to go pick up, man. He like, he like, this not for you. You are already fast forward past this. I was like, yeah, I'm past this. I don't need motivation. I, I'm, I'm. Where, where's the product? For, you know, for for that amount of money, where's the product? So uh, left and got the books, and and stuff, and you know, read the books and stuff like that. And then I took a Chris Bruce course, uh, a virtual wholesaling course. 
well, in the midst of me watching you and stuff. So I took the, the Chris Bruce course and uh, I had got my first uh, deal virtual, but it was in a market that was like a, a country and country town where nothing moving or shaking out there. And it was more of a subject two type deal. And I didn't know nothing about subject two yet. All I knew was, you know, one track minded. I, I didn't know it was creative ways of, of host, uh, you know, wholesaling. So it was like a, a real subject two type deal. Lost that deal. Then January came, you know, I was like, man, I'm finna, I'm finna get to it. And uh, I just started just uh, learning about an app that I use called Deal Machine. So if people don't know about Deal Machine, y'all go get that Deal Machine. I, I, I Deal Machine, my family uh, called, <laughs> hey, I, I, got, I got the promo code, Loopy G for Deal Machine. We got t-shirts, me and uh, Tony the Closer. Man, I just put everything on fast forward, man. So Deal Machine, one of the best apps. If y'all are real estate investor, that's a tool that all real estate investors need in a in a tool belt is Deal Machine. So I, I Deal Machine is Deal Machine in houses. Uh, you know, put locking locking the info up in, in the app about the property address, the property owner, and they have more things that you can use to utilize that system. But trapping your leads is a great tool to have Deal Machine for. So wait. So I was doing. Okay. Uh, it's, yeah. So Lupe, normally, normally, man, normally, I would let my guests just keep on taking it, it on and on. But I want to know is what is the code that they can use? Because uh, you know, what's the code that they can use from you? And also, too, is talk a little bit about the app because I know a lot of people are gonna ask. Okay. So uh, Deal Machine app is in your app store. Use the promo code Loopy G to get you uh, so you get free days, uh, like a 14 to 30 day free trial, and you get like 20 credits to use either postcards and or they skip tracing software. So uh, this lead deal machine is actually a, a app for real estate investors to not have to use pen and paper and jot down each of all you know each information on the property, and it instantly lets you know the uh, property owner uh information if they're absentee owner once you once you put this this the location mark on this on on that property that you're looking at it's going to pull up the address if that's the correct ad address then you, you click on that all you using is your thumbs and then pull up all the information you can take a picture of the property and actually start a mail campaign and send it off to the seller on a post with a postcard with their um uh, picture of their house on it, man, the, the app is great. And you can do advanced searches just like uh, skip tracing. So you actually can skip trace and call on the spot. So uh, definitely get that app. And also if y'all running a business, a small or large real estate business, you can actually have your, your team linked in to the app to where that you're driving for dollar people that you hire to drive for dollar specifically can have this app as a tool also to trap the information of these properties to where that is all in the database. Fantastic. So, yeah, deal, machine, deal machine is great. Gotcha. And Lupe, the code is L U P I T T is in Tom. L G G G G as in God. Gotcha. So L, L U P I G. Yeah. yeah, right. Correct. Correct. All right, all right dude. Yes. Yeah, so the promo code is Loopy G for Deal Machine. Download that app immediately and use promo code L U P I G. G as in God, as in great. Let's all be great. That's right. That's right. That's right, dude. All right. So uh, go ahead and uh, continue, bro. Hey. So so yeah, man. I'm I'm uh I'm a serial deal machine as far as trapping these leads. I don't show these houses no love. You know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm hitting all of them and trapping them in there and, and in my in my deal machine up so I can actually go back and cause I, I'm I, I have mass quantity of, of deal machines, uh houses because I'm moving so swiftly. And that's how fast it helps you move to where that where you normally spend uh, uh two hours to get twenty-five addresses because you gotta write them all down. You you like multiplying it and leaving out a neighborhood with a hundred uh, properties. So you I was going home, skip tracing, man, drip. I was actually calling this property for about a month, month to a month and a half. But Cone, the crazy thing is I was already driving for dollars and had already had like three other deals already. So the, my first closing 
was not my first deal. It was my first closing. That's crazy, ain't it? Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I'm calling up this lead that uh, that I was calling for about a month, month and a half. So people, y'all think the first time y'all call these these leads that, that they're cold. No, you have to keep calling it till you get a no or a change of a number or a you know one of those. If if you don't get an answer, you need to keep calling that phone number, and that's what got me to where I'm at today. Calling this guy on a week to week basis for about a month and a half, and finally he picked up, and um. Uh, I already kind of was familiar with this house too, Kong. It was a street, of, uh, it was a street away from my grandmother's street, and like I, I, knew, I knew the person that was living there and everything. The house ended up being an absentee owner. I was actually list stacking without actually getting on the online and list stacking. So the house was an absentee owner. I knew the brother that stayed there, but it wasn't in the brother name. It was in the other brother name, which who. You know, the actual seller was absentee owner. It was behind on taxes, like forty something thousand dollars, like uh forty seven thousand dollars or something like that. It was like a whole lot of. It was behind since like the nineties, nineteen ninety something. Come <laughs> then and then on then on top of that, the house was in bad shape, like very bad shape. Uh, it was basically like a drug house. So uh, his brother wasn't the type that was doing so good, but we always knew Jerry because he always stayed there. So he died. He died um, like earlier this year, or late last year. And out the blue, the people that I would normally see hanging there wasn't hanging there. And then the house got boarded up. So I like, man, I was wondering what happened to Jerry. So the brother uh, that was there, uh, I'm, I'm like, just wondering what happened to him. And then I started calling to see uh, who it was because I knew it wasn't his, I knew it wasn't Jerry because that that's wasn't who I was calling. So I'm calling, calling. The brother answered, told him that I wanted to buy the property. He said, "You know how much back the taxes are." I said, "Yeah, I'm already familiar. Do you know?" So he was like, "Yeah, I know it's around about this. I ain't checked in a while, but I know it's around about this range." So I like, well, hey, to be specific, it's around about this number, but I don't know how much more to be with the um tech the finished payout so um i said i can check into it he was like man uh i, I tried to sell that house before i said well let 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 me get let me get the job done you know so this guy was actually staying um uh, uh in dallas you familiar with dallas you just was at we live so uh he actually stays in dallas which is about four hours from here uh he was like well send the contract over something something uh, a, a simple one-page contract uh, that that was working for him, so sent that he signed it, uh, forwarded back in the email, and uh, I went and opened up title. So uh, the day I opened up title, I was kind of waiting to hear what we can do about the taxes in that situation, you know, because I wasn't familiar with how that worked, because this was my like my my first time dealing with a property with taxes. So she told me. The house is a go. Go ahead and market the property, my escrow agent. So what I did was I got a sign with my business name on it, like what the realtors and stuff have. I have a sign with my business name on it and my number. It don't say for sale or nothing. It just have my, my business uh, name and a number. Set that in the front yard in about two hours. I had got the buyer to call me just, just with, like within two hours. So he was like, yeah, I want to buy the property. I already was trying to buy the property, but the taxes, I didn't know how to uh, get around the tax situation. So I was like, well, he was like, you got that handled? I say, yeah, we are. We, we had that taken care of. You know, are you, willing to, uh, are you wanting to purchase the property? He was like, yeah. So I told him it was a $2,500 non-refundable earnest deposit, and I told him that I had wanted about uh, 65 or something like that. So he was like, well, what can you do, like 62 so I was like, all right, cool. So I was like, you're gonna have to bring the 2,500 non-refundable like immediately to lock this deal up. Other than that, I'm gonna continue to let other people that want a shot at the property have that same opportunity to bring the 2,500 non-refundable. So he was like, I get it to you tomorrow. Just uh, send a send a uh, per, uh, send an agreement so I can look over it and have my people look over it and make sure that your contract is good. So I was like, okay, great. Something to contract. He, he doubled back the next day with like everybody. Uh, my, he like my lawyer, whatever, say everything's good. 
He was like, is everything good? Are we good with the taxes and stuff? I said, everything is a go. We are ready. You know, uh, we're covering it all that at closing. So uh, he was like, okay. So I like, you can actually meet my escrow agent and uh, I actually have a business card and you can call her and, and she'll, you know, let you know what's going on, keep you in the loop. So when I met him uh, to get the uh, earnest deposit, which he went on ahead and gave it to me, I gave him the card. He called her on the spot. She, you know, reassured him that everything was good or whatnot, and uh, we could close whenever he ready. So, uh, man, everything was moving so fast. Everything was ready to close. So it was like, like a Wednesday, I got the money. Thursday came. He came to bring the rest of the money. So the money was there. Now we have to wait on closing papers, but he stayed way in Dallas, the, the seller, the actual seller stay in Dallas. So they need the original documents with the signatures and initials for closing. You can't use copies. You have to mail, they have to mail that back. So I was like, man, um, I didn't want to wait till Monday to close or Tuesday, trying to overnight some stuff on the Thursday. It wouldn't have made it back by Friday. So uh, while the money was on the table, I was like, well, give me the closing papers and I'll run to Dallas, you know. Uh, hey, I'll run to Dallas, you know, it was four hours away. So I was like, I called him. I was like, man, come meet me and sign these closing papers. And then, you, you know, you can figure out if you're going to come get your check, you get it wired, or you they can send it to you. You're like, okay. So I met him about three hours out, so almost to Dallas. And uh, he signed the papers. I got there like two hours. Signed the papers, I flew on back, got them documents at, at the uh at the title company Friday morning. I was closing and I was I was good. Then the crazy thing is I the, when I closed, he Oh, Lupe, I lost you, man. Oh boy. Technical difficulty. Uh Lupe must have pressed something because I lost him. So um, <laughs> I don't know what I, I I don't know if he knows how to get on, but I'm gonna try to stall some time, and uh, this is not gonna be edited out. It's gonna be because uh, I don't want to mess with the whole edit. But uh, let me shoot him a text <laughs> on Instagram. If you haven't followed me on Instagram, hit me up on IG, man. Go to Kong K H A N G dot W T M. He's back, Lupe. What Lupe? What happened, man? Bro. Yo, bro, dude, what happened, bro? I, I can't hear you. Just to let you guys know, this time it's not my fault. <laughs> no, Lupe, I still can't hear you, bro. Can you hear me? Yep, yes, rock and roll, I can hear you, dude. Uh, so look, so look, so uh, back to the story. So the day I close right i got i got the papers there friday afternoon uh friday afternoon it was like like right before they closed i got the documents there so we couldn't close so, so that friday morning i get the i get up go straight to the title come as soon as they open i get my check i leave he calling me telling me he not too far he about 20 minutes out so i'm like man you could have came down here in the morning and signed everything Hey, you made me drive way out there to get the closing documents done. Did you 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 20 minutes behind me? You could have just came and signed the documents and just been here when they open. Man, I was like, oh man, but hey, uh oh, the crazy thing, I told him that I was gonna make sure I gave him uh, two thousand, right? So I was really supposed to get fifteen thousand. So uh when the final payout came back, they end up uh being like 500 or something like that over so i actually gave him another 500 just to keep my word i didn't want him to get that see the check wasn't gonna be what it was after the final pay because everything moving so fast we're still waiting on the final payout from, from the city taxes so uh I, I just want to keep my keep my word with him and told him i made sure i give him two thousand because he didn't want he just want the property sold and stuff and didn't want to have to get no more fees added to him. So he was just like, give me a, give me a couple thousand. So a couple is two, you know? So um, I was like, all right, you know, she was, so I get to the title company. She was like, you know, he ain't going to be able to get 
uh, the whole 2000. I was like, nah, we're gonna have to give him that. So she was like, I'm not giving it to him. So I was like, I just take it out of my, out my, out my 15,000. So uh, I ended up giving that to him, that that 500, just to keep my word. So that's how I ended up getting the 14,500 instead of 15. Nice, bro, dude. Okay, you guys. I know you guys are gonna have a lot of questions because because Lu Loopy was going through really quick. So I'm gonna break everything down really quick. But man, show some love. Show some love for Loopy, man. Respect, man. Do do whatever it takes, man. Drive four hour with the contract, and I'll break it down to you guys so you guys can understand. So what it is is that I don't know. I guess in I guess in Houston, Texas, they don't need a notary for the seller to sign because typically so so basically the like like the seller like they need like basically Chicago, like basically the title company or the attorney they need a wet signature so they so they cannot get a copy so they so they cannot send a uh, the closing statement to the seller and then the seller signs it and then fax it back it has to be. It has to be a real. It has to be the the, the original copy where the the seller actually signed the wet signature on it. All right, you guys. So those of you who don't know, um, so a lot of times when we do these deal virtually, and if they don't have a title company local to where the seller is, because I get you guys ask me this question all the time. What they do is they send a notary out, and typically a notary is somebody that actually witnessed that this is the person they get a copy of the driver's license that that is the seller all right that is the seller that is selling the property that is signing the final paperwork so i don't know how houston texas is but th they let you run the copy to the seller no, uh no, that no that was that was for the closing documents the closing documents that wasn't for the for the purchase and sale agreement contract that was for the closing doc right. documents yeah right 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 so, so for the final paperwork, when the seller closed, that's what, that's what, that's what needed to sign. The purchase and sell agreement can be just a copy, but, right, but the, right, closing, right. Yeah, the closing statement has to be the original. And normally they will have the notary um, to verify that that is the seller. But, 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 but for those of you who don't know that, you got to take that in consideration. So if it's out of state, sort of the seller lives out of states or, or cannot make it to the, uh, the signing table, they'll send someone out. Uh, which is typically a notary to get that uh, that closing doc signs. All right. Now, uh, Lupe. Now, I want to break down is how much. Uh, what was the asking price when the when you first talked to the seller? Uh, his price or the yep. price that I get? Uh, no, I, I want to know the asking price. So, what did the seller uh, asking price uh, at the beginning? I, I can't remember. He just wanted a couple thousand. Okay, so, so that's why we was that's why we was just waiting for the payout because I couldn't really tell them. I just knew that I had a spread to possibly make uh twenty, you know, in in between ten to uh, ten to twenty thousand. I see. So we just wanted the payout so we can figure out the rest, the, the whole balance. Got it. You know, because, yeah, we had to figure that out. So I got you. Man. He, yeah, he didn't want nothing but a couple thousand. I got you. Jump. I got you, man. Okay, so now is there uh, is there a mortgage or just a tax lien? Nah, it was just a this this was a free it was a free free and clear. Cool, man. It's so it's tax, free and clear, tax. right? It's free and clear. So there's there's uh, a tax, and roughly at that time you estimated about forty k. You said? Uh, no, it was around. Uh, it was probably around forty three or something like that. About forty three thousand or something like that. Gotcha. Okay, so about forty three thousand dollars owing tax, and now on the on the purchase and sell agreement, did you did you put in the amount that the seller was going to get, or do you just leave that blank? No, nah, I think it was. I think it was. Um, I think about forty three thousand or something like that. I put on there. I can't remember. I think about forty three thousand. I got you. Okay, so basically, you talked to the seller. The seller said, "Hey." There's going to be roughly about forty-three or something thousand that's owe on the property. So you go ahead and put that forty-three, and you tell him that pays off. Then you will just give him a couple thousand after outside of closing. Right. Ah, see, I so got gotcha. you. I have to actually be transparent with him and show him the the documents. You know, as far as uh, the payout and how much the taxes actually can end up being at the end. That way he can understand, you know, 
but I, but we still did the blind hood and everything. But you know, right? The, I just wanted him to see where he was at on taxes because at first he wanted like three three thousand or something like that, and it, it was it was the it was, it was just going too far. Up. I see. Gotcha. Gotcha, man. So, the number, so past the number we agreed on. Past the number we agreed right. on. I got yeah. you, man. I got you. So, so, so he just wants the property to be sold, the tax to be paid off, and he said, "Hey, after that, just give me a couple thousand bucks," which you guys agreed on about two thousand dollars, right? Right. It was about three thousand at first until we I got gotcha. Yeah. Okay, man. It was going up. Then we 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 talked, negotiated to two thousand. Gotcha. So now. So, and he agreed with you, right, Lupe, at the beginning that, you, that, 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 that that's going to be taken care of outside of escrow, right? It's, is that what it is? Right. Right. It, now, I, it's, we end up doing everything, you know, on, on, on black and white, you know. I just, you know, I want to make sure everything went through the proper ch channels. Ah, I got you. I, I got it. So, now, the title company calls you and said, hey, see, the thing is, I got to break this down because a lot of you that are starting out might get really confused. So you put it on the purchase agreement for 43000 which is the purchase price, right? Right, right. And then once the, the title uh, does, uh, does the research and pull the title report, <clears throat> they get the whole paid off of whatever it comes out to the taxes. And then your title company said, well, well you, how do you want to pay the seller? And you said, hey, go ahead and take it out of my assignment fee. Right. Is that correct? Right, correct. I gotcha. Okay, got it. And that was before we got the final, final payout. And then it ended up being under the 2000 That's why I'm like, now nah, I got to keep my word. Because we had trimmed it from three to, to two. And then once it all came together, once that last little piece of information came in, because the closing was coming so fast, we, that last piece of information came in, it was another five hundred. I was like, nah, I'll take that other five from out of that too. Make sure you get us two. I got Make you, sure man. You yeah, I got you, bro. Respect, dude. And uh, the, uh, a lot of you guys are missing that because, you know, it's, I mean, in this business, you guys, even though, you know, like, even though it looks big, but it's just a, it's just a really small world. I mean, to me, it's about reputations, and that's what Lupe is doing and keeping reputations, uh, which, to, which, which to me is, dude, a respect, bro. So now, Lupe, next question for you is how many, so how many bedroom and bathrooms does the property have? It was a, a three-one with a two-car garage. Okay, and what is the square foot? Uh, it was around about, about 1,300 or something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. 1300 square feet and repair costs. Wow. So I put, I put the repair costs right at about, oh uh, man, I put the repair costs right at about 30. 30K? Uh huh. Now, what does the, now, when you locked this deal up on the contract, Luby, did you, did you, did you went out to see the property at all? Yeah. I, you know, I, I, yeah, I, I, I really was familiar, familiar with the, familiar, familiar with the property. So I, I've been seeing this property my, my whole life. Oh, okay. Oh, so, okay. So you are, you actually been through the property and seen the inside and everything. Correct. Okay. Now, Lupe, do you have, do you have any construction background? No. Okay. So how, so when you come up with the 30 K, what do you base that? What do you base your estimate off of? And and also too is what needed to be done to the property. <clears throat> it it, it kind of needed a little bit of everything except for uh, I wasn't quite sure about the foundation and the roof, but everything else needed to be done. So I kind of multiplied the square footage uh, by by about twenty uh, by about twenty dollars or something like that, just okay. for a complete renovation. Gotcha. Okay, so you <clears throat> so you take the square. Else. Gotcha. So so Lupe, you take the square footage times by twenty dollars is that is that how much people are charging per square footage in your area in, in, in that particular area you're not doing that 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 uh that that type of rehab to where it's just gonna be extreme man they got that house looking good right now too i just saw it the other day they got the house looking good but yeah it's uh it it, it, it don't cost that much to fix them type of houses up in in, in that neighborhood so i, I did it right now. At around twenty, like it was about twenty thousand, you know, about about a square foot of the property. 
Okay. So, so now you know, some, some areas we'll do 25 to 30. You know, it all depends on what area it, it is because, you know, certain areas will put different materials. So that'll put the, 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 the price up. Right, right. Correct. So that's why that's why I'm really breaking this down. So those of you who are listening, like when I first started, I have no construction background. I didn't know how uh, how 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 anything costs. That's why I, that's why I'm taking the time to break this down so you guys can understand here. Uh, now, Lupe, three bedroom, one bath, uh, one bath, thirteen hundred square feet. You estimated thirty thousand. Based on you take the square footage, you times it by twenty dollars per square feet. Now, my next question to you is, what needed to be done? Windows. Okay. Everything. Right. Okay. Right. Right. It, it, it needed everything. So I kind of, so I kind of did it like as, as far like a, like a low, like a low rehab. So I told them it was gonna be around about thirty to uh, thirty-five thousand. But the ARV with it, with it having a two-car garage, the ARV was putting it at right at about in between one sixty to one eighty, just because okay. it had the two-car garage. Because that, that, that ain't. It's not that. It's not that familiar in, in that neighborhood to have a two-car garage. So it's usually a two, two, uh, two, one or three one, and you might have a one car garage, you might not. This one had the two car garage. Gotcha, bro. Gotcha. Okay. So, so, so the thirty now the kitchen and the bathrooms in this particular area with the estimated thirty to thirty five k rehab, are are we talking about the kitchen's going to be granite top, uh, granite countertop, or and are uh, we? Oh uh, no, you're not. Gotcha. Gonna put that, you're not putting no granite and stuff in these houses. Got it. Got it. And that's why you guys, that's why to me, that's why the number came in a little bit low. That's why, you know, just, just based on, just based on, just based on my knowledge, that's why I'm asking Lupe. So you guys don't get confused when you come across a, a talking to a seller and they said, Hey, this house here is going to need a complete rehab. It's a three, one, 1300 square feet. So this one, you guys got to take into considerations that this doesn't have granite countertops, stainless steel appliances. It doesn't have, um, you know, tile bathroom floors, tile shower, shower surround. So it's not like all the bell and whistle. To me, a three bedroom, one bath, 1300 square feet with all bells and whistle, like nicely, like nicely done top to notch is probably going to run you, I would say close to that, probably close to that 45K or so, 45, uh, 45, you know, 45K or so. Um, uh, give or take. All right, you guys, I, I'm, t I'm telling you guys this. So those of you who are starting out, you need to take notes of this. So when you come across talking to a seller, you need to have a good ballpark of an estimated repair cost so you can give them a, an intelligent uh, offer on the property. So ARV is 160 to 180 and the buyer. Um, so what did the end up, uh, the buyer end up uh, buying it at? Uh, six, 62. 62 K. And uh, do you put down any earnest money with the uh, seller, uh, Lupe? Uh, no, I put ten dollars on there. I, I put ten dollars on the contract. And those of you who said, "Hey, you need money. You need money to make my to 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 do this business." If you don't have ten dollar to put down as an earnest money, and I know there's some interview I I did where people put one dollar down because all it needs it needs some kind of of, of, of uh, money in exchange to make that contract legit. So don't tell me if you don't have one dollar or ten dollar, dude. Or maybe you should stick with the nine to five and not be not get into this business, man. Now, um, Lupe, the next question to you is: How long did um, where do you buy? Where do you find your buyer from? I set my sign in front of the. Oh yeah, door. yeah. Gotcha. And within two hours. Yeah, within two hours, the buyer was there, so I didn't have to market the property anymore. Gotcha, man. Now the buyer did the buyer did the, did the buyer do the walkthrough? Uh, no, he was familiar. He kind of familiar with the house too. He was a, he was actually a reverend. He stayed he stayed in the area also. He, he had already been trying to figure out how to get the house. So oh he wow! Was waiting, he was waiting for it to go to auction. Ah, I see. So he didn't know. Gotcha. So, so uh, I'm, so the buyer didn't know, didn't know, uh, didn't know how to do what you were doing or, 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 or couldn't get it in a contact with the seller. And so he pretty much already knew the property. So he pretty much bought it sight unseen. Uh, he knew the, he knew the, he knew the, he knew the, um, the seller, he knew the, the daddy. Cause it was actually the daddy property, but the daddy died. So he knew, he knew all about the property. Like he knew, he just didn't know how to do what I did. Yeah.
I got you, man. The taxes and stuff situated. He didn't know how to do all that. Gotcha. So, so the buyer made you an offer back at uh, sixty-two thousand, sight unseen, right? He he didn't need to walk through the property or inspect the property, correct? No, right. Gotcha, man. And how quick was the closing? Nine, uh, nine days. Nine days. Boom. Nine days. I mean, how would you guys like to make um, what uh, fourteen five or let's just say fifteen G's in nine days, man? Loopy, man, I want to say congrats, bro. That's awesome, dude. Congrats, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Hey, uh, Loopy, now let's wrap this up, man. So how do people how do people connect with you, man? So right now I have a, a YouTube channel, Loopy G R E I. So L U P I G R E I. So Loopy G R E I on YouTube and on Instagram, I'm Loopy G. So you can put L dot U dot P dot I dot underscore G. That's where I'm at. Awesome. And you guys, I'm, I'll make sure I put all that in the link uh, um, <laughs> in the description. So you, all that links in the description so you guys can uh, reach out and connect with uh, uh, Lupe. And if you guys want to know more about the deal machines, all that. Things, we, we try to do big things. You know what I'm saying? We try to do big things. Got you, know, got... I, I, you know, I will see you in Las Vegas at, at, at Tony the Closer event. You know, oh, really? Yeah. You come, oh. You, you come to Las Vegas November the 8th and then November the 9th, right? Yeah, 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 man. Okay. Now, Lupe, now, now that you bring that up, those of you who don't know about this, man, Tony, a.k.a. The Closer, you right. guys, is... He is putting up a, oh gosh, man, he's putting up a huge, a huge real estate event um, in Las Vegas at the MGM, all right? And I think he said it, it's going to hold like, I don't know how many thousands of people. A whole lot of thousands. A whole lot of thousand people, but uh, um, I'm going to be there. It's November 7th and 8th. Go buy your ticket now. November the 8th and 9th. Oh, oh, shoot. I'm sorry, man. November 8th. And ninth, and uh, do you have uh, a link, uh, Lupe? Yeah, man. Y'all can go click the link in my bio. The link is in my bio if y'all want them uh, tickets. I am bringing uh, T. Rob out, Tony the Close. I'm bringing him out onto the stage, you know, Friday. So, hey, y'all make sure y'all out there, man. Y'all make sure y'all up. Child, click the link in my bio and, and get y'all general admission tickets. But there are different tickets and packages you can choose to um, buy. Awesome, man. And I know that Tony made, made the ticket so, so affordable. I think it's like one, like 197 or something like that, right? Correct, correct. Dude, 197 bucks for you to be in a room full of millions and multi-millionaires, man. So, you, dude, so don't miss the opportunities. I would love to, and I know Lupe would love to meet you in person in Las Vegas, November 8th and 9th. Go to Lupe, or Lupe. Uh, bio on Instagram, right? On Instagram? Right, correct. And go buy your ticket like right now, you guys. Anyways, man, um, we're going to wrap this up right now, Lupe. Do you have any last word? Uh, whatever you want to tell the audience, man. Last word. Hey, man. I'm linking up with all individuals that that's, that, that's changing their mindset or already had a mindset changed. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm definitely uh, be excited to meet you also, Kong. Cause hey, we hey, I'm, I'm cool with some of the same people you cool with. So it's a matter of time before we run into each other. You know, uh, hey man, hey you 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 didn't inspire me a lot too going through all my journey. So uh, I'm I'm gonna have I'm I'm gonna make sure you you remember me. You gonna have something to be proud of me about for real. Awesome, bro. Hey, you know what, man? I am proud of you, bro. And thank you so much for the kind word, man. I'll see you in Las Vegas and drinks is on me, man. I'm gonna buy you. I'm gonna buy you the first drink. So remind me. Remind me if I forget, but I'm going to whip out that card and I'm going to buy you the first drink, bro. And hey, Lupe, thank you so much, man, for taking your precious time to jump on, to share your stories uh, and your journey with everybody. I know that you have a, you mentioned you have a YouTube channel. You guys go follow, link up with Lupe. He's a cool dude, legit, respect. And also too is, as you guys, he, I mean, throughout the stories, the man does what he does and he tell it like it is, man. And, you know, I, I, you know, it, 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 to me, it's like connecting with, not just like-minded people, but people that are in the business where you can actually trust that 
they, they do like they do what they say that they're gonna do, man. So thank you so much for jumping on, man. Really, really like the time that I spent with you. For those of you who are new to the channel, if you haven't subscribed, boom, man, come on, man, smash oh. the subscribe button. Join the family. These, the, my channel is for those of you who's ready and who's committed to take your life and your business to a whole nother level. If you like your nine to five, but you're happy with an average life, then this is not the channel for you because all I talk about is not success overnight. I don't, I don't sell you the fake dreams, all right? This is gonna take a massive amount of work. It's gonna be a rough journey, but I promise you that it's all gonna worth it because when you reach that financial freedom level, you'll be able to help you know, your loved ones, your families your friends, people that need you to succeed, man. So anyways, you guys, uh, take care. Have a great rest of your day. If you, um, oh, by the way, follow me on Instagram. Go to Kong, K-H-A-N-G dot like a period, W-T-M. Lupe, thank you so much, man. Peace out. Uh, I